Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this day. It is the first day of winter, Friday, December 24th. I'll tell you about the weather in just a moment. On our show today, we're going to bring you a segment from United with Maggie Blackwell. She's going to update us on uh, the use of uh, Roundup and other pesticides within the village. It's, it's actually changed over just about a week or so, uh, new updated information. First, we're going to have on Cynthia Connor. She is now the mayor of the city of Laguna Woods. So we'll find out uh, about what's going on, sort of a wrap up for the year. They had their city council meeting just a couple days ago. And we're also going to bring you a segment with uh, Dan Oweiler of Sterling Financial Advisors and Lacera Medical. Now there are no meetings, in fact there are no meetings until next Thursday. So uh, no meetings to talk about until then. Now let's get to the weather and uh, if you're watching us in the morning, quite uh, cloudy out there today. We should see some uh, sun and the clouds breaking a little afternoon today for a pretty nice day. I'm going to stay in the upper 60s for the next few days. Now, really, the difference is, I was telling you about the, the uh, uh, impending storm coming in on Christmas. Well, that has been cut back by quite a bit. And in fact, uh, it looks like it's a 20% chance of really early showers, as I put there, when I really should say overnight from Christmas Eve into Christmas morning, maybe even by 8, 9 o'clock, uh, it's going to be pretty much out of here. It was going to originally look like we were going to get like two days, uh, two or three days of rain. That is pretty much out of the forecast now. It will be a, quite a cold front that will be coming in over those days. So. Uh, from uh, Christmas uh, through uh, all the way through really uh, maybe even New Year's, we're gonna see co cooler temperatures and throughout California, much colder temperatures. But the chance of maybe getting a little rain or a little snow on the top of Saddleback, probably not gonna happen at all. So uh, that's good news though. A little bit of rain, but not much. It won't uh, dampen the Christmas, Christmas time. Now, here are the temps uh, coming up uh, really for the average of the next uh, three days of the weekend. Throughout the state, you can see the north coast, uh, 55 in the Bay Area. 59, that's normal for the Bay Area. I'll be, uh, I'll be up there next week, and there are high temperatures around that area, around the peninsula, San Mateo and all. This is uh, pretty normal for them. Uh, Central Coast, in fact, all these temperatures are pretty uh, on target here. Uh, even Palm Springs at 75. Now, you notice up in Tahoe and Mammoth, uh, they're not getting any snow. Uh, they'll probably get a little bit from this system coming in. It'll hit Northern California first, but not what uh, they thought it was going to be. So they'll probably get something coming in more around Sunday, uh, maybe Sunday or Monday. We'll see about that. But pretty much mostly cloudy up there over the weekend. You can see in the uh, mid to low 40s, Big Bear on average about 54. Now, all those temperatures will certainly go down as we make our way into uh, next week. In fact, uh, up at Big Bear, they're going to look at highs of maybe around 40 or so. Uh, but as far as uh, the rain and maybe snow coming along with it, well, Big Bear, right with those areas, will probably get a dusting of snow. But again, not to the levels uh, that were talked about just a couple days ago. All right, we're going to now take you down to uh, the fitness center. Yesterday, a uh, gentleman, Irv Picken, I, th I think a lot of you uh, probably know him. He enjoyed, believe it or not, he is 110 years old. This is just phenomenal. He's one of the oldest people in the world. There he is coming in. And it was so incredible. Uh, he's been a lifelong Dodger fan. And a while back, he even uh, met uh, Vince Scully a couple years ago. He goes back to the days before they were even called the Brooklyn Dodgers. And uh, they were called forget what they were called before then. He got accommodations from uh, local, uh, from us of course, and the city, the county, Hopefully even I'll the mayor. Here we go. When the season starts again. <laughs> well, I'm sure you will be, okay? We'll, we'll, be, we'll be rooting for you, we'll uh, be rooting for the Dodgers too, all right? Yeah. All right, happy birthday to you. Yeah. Thank you. Go ahead, blow out the candles. Go ahead, blow. Yay! <laughs> The holidays are here. Let Diane's Hallmark help you with all your gift giving needs with a wide selection of gifts as well as Hallmark Christmas cards and ornaments. Diane's Hallmark can help you get into the holiday spirit. We also carry fine women's clothing, jewelry and accessories. 
And don't forget that we carry Bibles, Christian books, and gifts as well. Come in today and see it all. Diane's Hallmark is located in the Walmart Shopping Center next to Hobby Lobby. Welcome back. Uh, with me right now is the new mayor of the city of Laguna Woods. Well, she was a few years ago, so I'd like to welcome you back. Cynthia Connors is the mayor, and uh, happy holidays to you. Thank Good you. to see you. Thank you. And uh, we're, you know, we're, you're going to talk about a few things, and I mentioned Irv Pitkin there. Uh, I, I forgot to say that he got a, a letter of recognition from Governor Jerry Brown as well. So uh, it was quite a day. When you get to be 110, a lot of people are ready to recognize you. Yes. That. But that's yeah. really one of, one of my favorite things about being the mayor is yeah. to recognize our longest lived citizens. Mm -hmm. And our city council gives uh, usually recognition to everybody who has a birthday of 100 or older. Yeah. And Irv is one of our best examples of people who just keep on keeping on. And you know, you see he's in a wheelchair, but and I mean, he just comes in and his caregiver takes him to one of the pieces of equipment in the gym and he does his exercises and then he takes him over to the next yeah. one and he does his exercises. And he it's has amazing. his whole so, whole social network there. So he gets physically and socially active. That's what, that's what <laughs> yeah. keeps all of us going. Yeah, it is. It's really amazing. It was a fun event and uh, uh, good for him. It's yeah. quite, I, you know, where I was looking at a statistic and I think the oldest person is maybe 114, but he's like in the, you know, like the top 20 yeah, in the world. I mean, it's incredible. He's always been my hero at the gym. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's incredible. So um, you, uh, you know, first want to say uh, a little bit about um, a while back the election that happened. Now, if I'm correct, uh, you folks had three for three? Two for two. Or two for two, okay. We, um, in the November election, mm -hmm. Two of our uh, council members ran for their own seats okay. and, and were reelected. And we were very pleased to note that within the city of Laguna Woods, there was an 83% voting record. That wow. is 83% of our eligible voters voted, wow. which is a great number. And I'm yeah. really, really pleased by the engagement of, of our citizens and of yeah. our residents. That's, not, that's a high number. Yeah, very good. Now. Uh, it, they were still on a ballot, even though it was two for two. Well, no, right? there was one other person running. Oh, there was. Yes. I didn't realize yes. that. Okay. That was Judith Troutman, who's okay. been a director here at Third and GRF That's for right. many, many yeah. years. I vote in my city, so uh, I don't see the mayor mm -hmm. uh, elections for here. All right, uh, you've got a few things you want to talk about. Sure. We had a, a presentation regarding the annual count of the homeless population in Orange County. Mm -hmm. Here in our city, we don't have a large homeless population, but we are recognizing our role as citizens of the world and residents mm -hmm. of Orange County that, that we need to have a unified approach to homelessness. So they are doing a census called Everyone Counts, and it's on a particular day at a particular point in time, like January 19, and they're seeking volunteers to go out, and they will also survey the homeless who they find and find and ask them some demographic questions, find out how many are seniors, how many are veterans, mm -hmm. how many are families, so that the county can help design services to meet those needs. Okay. And if anybody wants to volunteer to help with that, there's a website called everyonecountsoc.org. Okay. Okay, so that's, that's us being good public citizens. All right, now you wanna talk about uh, um, the audit and golf carts and uh, all kinds of things. We were busy. Yes. Uh, we, we've uh, had our audit report from our auditors. <clears throat> it was completed 
well ahead of schedule. We, mm -hmm. Our books were in good enough shape that we didn't have to do any cleaning up at the end of the year and Very the auditors good. could just come in and do it. And we had a nice clean audit. And we owe a, a lot of thanks to our city staff who has done a lot of work to, to clean up our, our records and to make sure that we are doing everything decently and in order. Yeah, very good. We yeah, well, you got a great city manager. We do, there. and yeah, we have a, a great Green. treasurer. Yeah. Um, our, um, we had sort of an impromptu discussion on golf carts. The city mm -hmm. decided to abandon an easement that it had held since it received land from the county. Okay. Ridge Route at its end by Carlotta makes a little curve and parts of Furniture Row come over onto our side of the street. And oh. there is a little easement of, I don't know, 10 or 20 feet that's between the parking lot and the village fence, mm -hmm. which used to be there for a road. But it's not connected at either end. It's just not connected to Ridge Route at this end and it's not connected uh, to Carlotta at that end. And it's just a parking lot verge. And so as part of the cleanup of things that have just been lying around for a while, we abandoned that easement. And so that property okay. is still owned as it always has been owned by third or by whatever smaller um, HOA was there before they all combined oh, to okay. be third mutual. All right. I doubt that they're going to expand the wall back and capture that extra land, but they can if they want to. Okay. But. All right. So um, now also, um, uh, if they, if they, you know, you, met, you mentioned how, and we've seen this in the, in the village before, and when you talk about third and sometimes they have to go back and people don't realize that third and United were at one time multiple different HOAs. Right. And, I, and I think uh, that in certain records still show that, am I right? Yes, I believe a lot of the property records still show that. Yeah. And, uh, and so that's why when you mentioned that, because I, I remember when they were talking about something else in that area, it was very complicated, more complicated than it probably should be. Right. Yeah. So, but for, for most purposes, we just say third. Yeah. And, and let the lawyers worry about the rest of it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Now, um, some of the uh, plans you have uh, coming up for this year? Well, I'm looking forward to um, the city continuing to provide excellent service for our residents. We've improved our building counter procedures. We have, uh, we're still continuing to offer our taxi vouchers mm -hmm. for um, medical appointments and for general trips within Orange County. So okay. people, can, who, people who don't drive anymore can still get around and go to all the places they wanna go. Uh, we have, um, uh, our library is still there and I'm really enjoying the electronic features of the library. Mm -hmm. And I read a lot of books on my iPhone now. Yeah. Just check them out from my living room and there they are. Yeah. Um, and uh, we offer a number of programs at City Hall and, and including recycling of uh, medications and recycling of small e-waste and batteries and things like that. So I'm glad that we are continuing to serve our residents in tight budget times. Yeah, that's a, a good point that you just mentioned batteries, mm -hmm. that people can bring those to the city. Right. And um, that's just like where I live. It's, it's sort of the same thing. Where mm -hmm. I live, you actually bring it to the library. Yeah. They have a, a big container there. And so I save all the batteries and once Toner, a year. Toner cartridges take them and yeah. other stuff. So that's good to know for yeah. folks. Yeah. Fluorescent lights go to Home Depot. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, also, I will continue to be working on golf cart access. We're mm -hmm. working with Sherry Horn on that. And we are still trying to get golf carts across Valencia, over towards the hospital, okay. into Trader Joe's. We had plans to get them into the mall, but mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody yeah. <laughs> wants to go to the mall these days, but yes. whatever that turns out to be. Yeah. But that would open up, we are working with the city of Laguna Hills to, uh, to get a traffic study, to uh, assure them that we don't have much in the way of incidents with golf carts and okay. uh, sharing, sharing parking lots and, and roadways and sidewalks here. So that's one of my goals. Okay. Another thing I hope to do is to be um, a little proactive in helping our residents who are reliant on medical marijuana to transition mm -hmm. once our uh, cannabis collective closes according to state law. Okay. Because there are other places where they can, where they can get the products they need and I just want to make sure that they know where those are and how to get there. All right, very okay. good. 
And um, your next meeting is going to be the normal time. Uh, Third Wednesday be? in February. Yeah. Uh, at two in the afternoon. Not in Jan January, right? Third Wednesday in January. January. Okay. You're not you're not skipping a month. We're not skipping this. All right. Month. Anything else you'd like to add? No. It's just nice nice to be back. This will be my yeah. third term as mayor. And um, I enjoy it because it really gives me an opportunity to get out and meet a lot of the residents and talk to them about what the city does. All right, great to see you. Thank again. you. It's Say nice hi to, to everyone back. over there. Will do. Thank All you. right, we saw Noel yesterday. He just stopped in here, so it's always good to see okay. Noel Hatch. I wish everybody a uh, Merry Christmas. And if you don't celebrate Christmas, have a great holiday season and a Happy New Year and safe and healthy. Thank you very much. You take care. Thank we'll you. Be right back. Do you hear but not understand? I have good news for you. A proprietary system for verifying hearing correction, verified best speech clarity, is now available through the All-American Hearing Network. This means hearing improvement can now be verified and documented. Your individual hearing correction is guaranteed in writing. Call today to reserve your complimentary private consultation and experience word clarity dialed back into focus on the spot. Try AMP, the world's smallest hearing aid, at an unbelievably small price, just $750. It's ready to go in one visit, comfortable to wear, and virtually invisible when worn. Yes, you can now have verified best speech clarity. Hear every word. Call today to reserve your complimentary private consultation and experience word clarity dialed back into focus, on the spot, risk-free. individual care, specialized care. At Harvard Eye Associates, your vision and quality of life can be trusted to a group of specialists that provide advanced technology for the treatment of cataracts, including laser-assisted surgery, a broad range of intraocular lenses, and astigmatism correction. Come join the circle of care at Harvard Eye Associates, where the future of vision is today. It takes a team effort to provide compassionate care. At Health Plus Medical Supply and El Toro Pharmacy, your personal attention is our top priority. We have everything you need, including stair lifts, rollators, knee walkers, wheelchairs, power chairs, power wheelchairs, scooters, and car lifts. And we provide all maintenance and installation. Health Plus is located inside El Toro Pharmacy, where we provide the same compassion for your pharmacy and drugstore needs. Located in Moulton Plaza. Welcome back. With me right now is Maggie Blackwell. And Maggie, we're really kind of talking about landscape today, even though this is the United Update. You oversee the Landscape Committee. You're chair of that committee for United. Last time you were on, we were talking particularly about United's response to Roundup and the landscape meeting that you had had. And since that time, there's been some uh, changes and developments, oh, right? Oh, yes. It, it's a whole different picture now, kind of the same <clears> at the <throat> core, but different. Um, outside, the world has come up with some very good alternates for organics. Mm -hmm. I mean, more better organics. And so those came up after we finished the test or near the end of the okay. test, so we couldn't use those in our statistics or try them out. Right. And so the, we found some good ones that might be useful for us, which will, of course, change our billing and application mm -hmm. and all of that. And even, even Bayer bought out Monsanto now, and they're looking into changing the formula of oh, wow. Roundup. So <laughs> if they do that, who knows what the competition will be between them and what will happen. Yeah, that's interesting. I didn't know Bayer did that. And Bayer, of course, yes. is, a, is another um, you know, everybody it's, knows it's them a chemical our, company. Yeah. yeah, it does medicine. Usually. Uh, yeah, but, but you're right. They have a lot of herbicides and pesticides. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, right. So this this has changed the picture in two ways. And then the third thing is now that we had finished our test, 
a GRF and third can use our information and decide what they want to do with the picture. GRF has not decided whether to be non-toxic mm -hmm. or stick with, with Roundup. Uh, third already made the decision, but, but so on. So we have to, we're going to send our facts. Now everybody has our mm -hmm. information from the test. And it's gone to United Finance, who will figure out the plan right. and uh, continually adjust as we find better products. And so, so, so I don't think this is ever going to be something that stands still. Right. And right. then, and then third, we'll be using our our results, and so will GRF. And then they will make their decisions as to what to do. And then all the boards will meet together to be sure that there is no shock and no difference. Everybody will be able to give a clear picture okay. for, for their citizens as to what the whole picture will be for GRF and United and GRF and Third. Okay. And that's a very good idea because we're more likely to make better decisions at the time. But anyway, each yeah. board will make the decision for itself. I mean, Third's already decided but United and GRF have not. Okay. And so we will use all the upcoming, in the meantime, landscape will continue investigating and trying out things all the time. Now, as that, we know that there will be no assessments changed until at least 2020, mm -hmm. because we probably won't make the decision for several more months. Right. Right. And so we can't possibly do anything in 2019. And even by 2020, there may be some new surprise. Right, right. I yeah, mean, it's so just you, phenomenal. You have to look at that. So don't, don't be terrified or frightened by any of the numbers that you've heard already because in five days they've changed. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the group approach will be good. In the meantime, the Scientific American has a very interesting article about farmers in America had a test using glyphosate and checking for cancer through the lifetime of farmers in farms in America, and they found no correlation, no carcinogen okay. at all. So you say, what? And, but the World Health Organization test did come up and say, it is a possible carcinogen, yeah. and that's why they're working on it so hard. But then there's another report I read. You know, you, you don't know which one to believe. And it says the, the rats used in the test for the World Health, Health Organization seem to have a proclivity to non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So if they have a weakness for that, and then you give them some kind of poison, it's going to be really big. Right, right. Uh, so we don't know yeah, which of no this definitive is answer. true. So we will have to leave it to the scientists everywhere to fight this out. Okay. This is not our problem. Um, Bayer has, oh, I told you, Bayer has taken over Monsanto. So, so who knows? The whole picture is kind of woo, tossed yeah. up in the air, and yeah, here we are. That could really change with those two but the, different companies together. The yeah. good news for residents is that, <clears throat> that things are being considered very carefully by all the finance, finance directors and by GRF, our CEO, mm -hmm. and every mutual before we make a decision. And then, although it's an individual decision, it will be a group decision. Okay. And does that mean that, well, I know you can't answer for third, but are they going to go ahead or are they waiting? I guess we'll find out through them. I have no idea. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I can only speak for United. All yeah. right. And uh, group decision is probably the right way to go because... We all use... You all, you all come together in certain areas, so not right, to use right. it there and 30 feet away to use it... Right, right. ...would not... Then, yeah. then is one group pulling the labor off of there? They'd have to... Yes. I'm, I'm sure they keep very good statistics on what, what we owe because yeah. that's done by the acreage and time, so they'll know. But, but one of them could pull the labor pool mm -hmm. over and the other one not and so on. So we just, and, and third has different areas that might not need it. Yeah. And we may have more areas or few areas mm -hmm. that do need herbicides. And so all of this is, is just 
it's like a salad. It's yeah. still being tossed. Yes. All right. Very good. Well, we'll find out more when you have it. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, great to see you. Uh -huh. You have a good, good holiday. Good to see you, you too. Merry Take Christmas. Take care. Merry Christmas. Yes. Happy New Year. And we'll be right back. I'm coming for you, Cancer. With California Protons, I now have the technology and expertise to fight with unmatched precision. I'll zero in and wear you down with radiation, millimeter by millimeter. You won't weaken me. I'll spare my tissues and protect myself against future threats. Cancer, your history. I'm looking to the future. Did you hear the good news? Probably not, because your hearing is not what it used to be. Hearing Remedy will provide you with an amazing hearing experience and easy to understand explanations. It's plain and simple, and we will back it up with a 60-day money-back guarantee that you will love your new hearing instruments. We're family-owned and we're here for you. Our only goal is to walk out of here hearing better. At Hearing Remedy, we bring hearing aid technology down to earth. I started Sterling Financial under the premise that there was a need for integrity in this industry as well as quality service. There's such volatility in the stock market. They, you know, one day it could be up 100 points, the next day it could be down 500 points. Well, what we like to do is be able to have people go to bed and wake up the next morning knowing that their money is safe and secure. That's what we try to do here at Sterling Financial Advisors is to create peace of mind and quality of life in retirement. Well, hello, folks. This is Dan O'Weiler, the retirement professor, so to speak. You've seen me from time to time on this day with, with Ken in interviews. And from time to time, we like to do community service uh, spots with people that we've hooked up with in the past. And today we have Stephanie McCormick from Make-A-Wish Foundation here in Orange County. So welcome, Stephanie. Thanks, Dan. Happy to be here. Uh, Stephanie and I uh, became acquainted last year at our, at our uh, Client Appreciation Christmas event and we were able to raise some funds to them. But before we get started in that, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get involved with Make-A-Wish Foundation? Well, Dan, uh, 41 years in the nonprofit world. Okay. Uh, and it was uh, about six years ago when I was contacted because they had uh, a transition at their CEO level. and. Uh, it, basically, they just asked if I, what do I, what you do I think You were working with another foundation? Yeah, I was okay. with, not another Make-A-Wish. I was actually at another nonprofit right, right, at the time. Right, right, another foundation, yeah. okay. I was at uh, Mariposa Women and Family Center. So, so they did a headhunter approach. Yes, they okay. did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so for, uh, how long have you been with Make-A-Wish then? It'll be six years in a couple six weeks. Six years, yeah. okay. Well, that's great. Now, I'm assuming it's been a great experience. Well, I have to honestly say that this is... Probably the pinnacle of my career. Oh, great! Definitely, great. definitely. It's uh, it's hard to say no to Make a Wish. And, okay. And what we do in the community to help uh, kids with critical illnesses is just imperative. So tell us a little bit about Make a Wish and, and your your I don't know if it's your mission statement or whatever it might be, but tell us a little bit about how it works and what is it that you do. Well, it began actually in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, for a little boy named Christopher Gracious. Uh, his wish was to be a Chips motorcycle cop. For and how years. long ago was this? That was in 1980. 1980, yeah. wow, okay, 37 years yeah. ago. Yeah. Okay. So the national office actually is located in Phoenix okay. uh, because of Christopher's wish. And it really came about through uh, the efforts of a couple of police officers, uh, Christopher's mom, and then some other folks chimed in. And there were really five founders mm -hmm. uh, that helped to grant this first wish and just people that got together yeah, just okay. people that got together and okay. they and they kept saying well you know we think we can do this because Christopher had voiced 
with his mom that, you know, he, he wanted to be a Chips Motorcycle Cop. So they all came together in a very short amount of time because Christopher was quite ill. Uh, they uh, granted his wish. He had his own uniform. He was sw wow. sworn in as part of the Arizona State Highway Patrol. He got to ride on that motorcycle I'm assuming, and a helicopter. I'm assuming a <laughs> few tears at the same time. I would imagine so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, thus the first wish. And it's kind of an interesting story because uh, once the wish was over, uh, his health declined rapidly. Uh, and the group got yeah. together uh, after his wish and said, you know, why, why do we have to stop here? You know, why can't we continue on with this? So literally, they gathered together in one of their apartments and sat down on the living room floor. Back then, it was that green shag carpet yeah. stuff. As, <laughs> as we all do when we start business out of our garage right. or whatever it might be, right? Yeah, okay. and so they said, well, you know, we can do more for more kids, but obviously we need a bank account. So everybody emptied the change out of their pockets, literally. And what ended up on the floor was seventy-six dollars and thirty-two cents, <laughs> <laughs> and thus the start of Make-A-Wish. Okay, so so it's become a national organization, worldwide, international, international. Mm -hmm. Wow! And uh, you're you're president over the Orange County Inland Empire. Is that correct? Correct. correct. And how many employees do you have here? We have about twenty-nine employees. Okay. We have two offices. Our corporate headquarters are in Irvine, and okay. then we have an office in Riverside. Uh, so we have uh, um, 62 chapters within the United States sure. and then a, a presence internationally of about 42 affiliates. Sure. And, and our chapter uh, last year granted 347 wishes. I was going to ask that. Yeah. Okay. I know that we, uh, we became involved last year mm -hmm. as uh, we do a, a client appreciation mm -hmm. event at the end of the year and we sponsor charities uh, as part of our way to give back mm -hmm. to the community and we've done We've done uh, a lot of different ones. We've done uh, Wounded Warrior. We did the Jesse Reese Foundation, and then we got involved with Make-A-Wish last, last year, and we're, we're probably going to do that again this year, so we were excited. But, but what does it cost to grant a wish? Well, uh, the average uh, cost for our chapter is right around $7,500. Okay. Uh, that's both cash and in kind. I see. Uh, because the, the, quite often we have the opportunity for people to donate things to us to offset that cash cost of a wish. Okay. For example, airline miles. I see. They never expire for Make-A-Wish. Okay. And we have a lot of travel wishes that we do, and so those kinds of things help. Or we have uh, restaurants or and or hotels that offer you know you know some deep discounts for us. Um, our single largest in-kind donor is Disney. Oh really? Yeah. Well, I would imagine yeah. kids want to come to Disneyland. Yeah, they do. Or Disney World. Right. Yeah. So, uh, as I mentioned before, and it doesn't cost them anything to do that, really. I mean, no. I mean, yeah. as far as letting them in the gates, but I mean, they're, they're going to be open anyway. Yeah. But that's that is certainly a generous. Well, on their part. Well, I will tell you that last year Disney, uh, Disney's in kind totaled over 88 million. Oh wow! Wor worldwide. Wow. Worldwide. Wow. So we are uh, also a chapter that does what we call wish assists mm -hmm. because Disney's in our footprint. Sure. Uh, so on top of that, 347 wishes that that I told you we granted last year, uh, we also did 630 plus wish assists. Wow. And what that basically means is uh, that's another child from another chapter mm -hmm. uh, coming into our territory. And of course, where do they want to go to see Mickey <laughs> and Minnie and the princesses? <laughs> Stephanie, I know last year we, we were introduced to you uh, at our annual client Christmas event. We were able to raise some money for you there. We were, we were able to raise over $15,000, which we, we enjoyed passing off to you. But I know that you've got a... Uh, uh, had a uh, 30th anniversary video that we had used at our mm -hmm. event, we, which I thought was very telling of what Make-A-Wish does, yeah. you know, and, and so I thought that it would be good if, if we could show the folks your, but I understand you're at your 35th anniversary, is that correct? It is, we'll yeah. be celebrating For Orange that County, this right? year. Orange County and the or Inland Empire. Okay, now when did Orange County start as opposed to the... Uh, 1983. Okay, so they were a couple years after yeah. that that they started, but right. I thought it'd be good to show the video that, that we used because I felt very good about uh, it really portraying what Make-A-Wish does, mm -hmm. and so uh, let's show that video there for Make-A-Wish and, and uh, we'll follow up when that's through.
When I was two and a half years old, um, I was diagnosed with a Wilms tumor and I had to get my left kidney removed and it was an extremely difficult and hard time in my life and my family's. And I think the hardest part to see is when your family is in, um, is in pain. And the one thing that I truly love about the Make-A-Wish Foundation is when research can only go so far and treatment can only go so far, um, Make-A-Wish comes in and gives you the hope, strength, and joy, and that's sometimes all you need to keep fighting. Make-A-Wish is not just for terminally ill children, but for all children who face life-threatening medical conditions. Back in uh, 1984, I was diagnosed with a kidney disease, and uh, it wasn't until after my kidney transplant that um, one of the hospital social workers actually came in and, and talked to me and asked if, if I'd ever looked into Make-A-Wish. Now, I said I'd like to see Phantom of the Opera. Now, Make-A-Wish isn't known for doing anything small, so they sent me to London to go see Phantom of the Opera in the original theater. And to think that my small wish of watching a show with my father turned into that. It was a moment of hope when you're not sure what's going to be around the next corner. Our chapter will grant 335 wishes this year, but that is less than half of the eligible wishes within our community. I remember every minute of it. I remember it like it was a vacation last summer. Uh, we were between being picked up uh, that morning in a big limo. My wish granters, Peggy and Dave, were there to, to hand my sister and I both backpacks. The limo took us to the airport and uh, we were off. We went to Florida and did the Disney Big Red Boat cruise. And for once in this journey, you were not surrounded by needles and doctors and weird words that four-year-olds don't know what even it means. <laughs> And you're going to throw a hook like this. <laughs> Although Make-A-Wish is a nationally known brand, the Orange County and the Inland Empire chapters operate on a completely local basis, granting wishes to local children. One of my favorite aspects that oftentimes goes overlooked, I think, is uh, the family that's involved with wishes. And um, it, it's easy to overlook the aspect that, that families oftentimes um, are juggling so many things when they're dealing with uh, life-threatening illnesses. And when Make-A-Wish gets involved, it allows these families, even if it's just for a brief moment, to come together and, and refocus on some important things. The uh, wish that was granted to our son was a life-changing experience, not only for Taylor, but everyone in our family. And the parents watching their child smile for the first time maybe sometimes in months and you see that gratitude in their eyes um, it just doesn't get any better than that. There are certain triggers that I will always have. Um, the hospital smell, white walls, they don't uh, feel right to me. Uh, I have flashbacks. It's hard, I mean, I'll go into the room and yell and I would stay away from her because she would get me going, it's just hard. It's and that one day they told us, screw people are taking over and letting us know this is going to happen to your boy. I'll be begging him to take my eye instead of his, but that's the way it is. A wish come true empowers children, strengthens families, and enriches the entire community. Never underestimate the power of the smile of a wish child. It's truly life transformational. Thank you. Well, folks, this has been a great interview for us. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, even though it's a financial planning firm, we work specifically with clients and 
setting up their retirements and setting up secure income streams for them. We also try to give back to the community as well. And in our experience with, with Make-A-Wish Foundation last year was just nothing but positive. We are talking uh, off air. We've also sponsored some other groups like the Albert Pujols Foundation, um, uh, Wounded Warrior Project, we, Jesse Reese Foundation. These are all charities, but our, our experience with Make-A-Wish was just as positive, if not more so, than it was with any of the other foundations. And so, as a financial planning firm, we would like to give back to the community. We hope that uh, you'll take the opportunity to make, maybe check with uh, a Make-A-Wish Orange County Empire, is that right? And the Inland Empire. And the, in and the Inland Empire. You can go to their website or you can give them a call. The number will be there on your screen. And we would encourage you to take advantage of, of this organization if, if in your legacy planning you have a desire to leave some money to charity, I think it would be a, a charity worth considering. Hopefully you'll have a great retirement and this is Dan Oweiler with Sterling Financial Advisors wishing you a good day. Thank you. I would like to invite you to watch our new television show called Inspiration for Today. It's on every weekday morning right here on Channel 6 at 7.30 a.m. Saddleback Church of Laguna Woods hopes to start your day with encouraging stories, inspirational music, and lots of laughs, too. Remember, Saddleback Church meets weekly in Clubhouse 5 at 9 and 11. We would love to serve you a free breakfast and have you join with us for worship. I was unable to achieve erection. You know, being single and when searching for a partner, um, that was always in the forefront of, of my thinking. I wanted to find a more natural solution. Lasara offers the only clinically proven medical treatment that reverses erectile dysfunction without the use of pills, needles, or surgery. I'm just really grateful to Lasara. Uh, this is the best decision I could ever have made. Call now for the Laguna Woods Special. Thank you for joining us. I have John Snedeker and Dr. Michael DeYoung, who's here with us from Lasara Medical Group. How did a Lasara Medical Group begin? Well, we specialize in treating men with erectile dysfunction, and we originally uh, had learned about this treatment when we read about it in the Wall Street Journal. And at first, uh, when I say we, it was my father and I, and when we first read about it, we were thinking, oh, it's kind of interesting shockwave therapy for men with erectile dysfunction. What does that actually mean? Um, for me, I immediately thought, I think of shockwaves as, as, as a car battery or something. <laughs> that sounds a little intense. Uh, we started to do a little more research, and as we did research, we learned what the treatment is all about, and the whole purpose of it is to take a man who can't perform naturally and bring him back to being able to function naturally. Mm -hmm. um, as the days went on and we uh, thought about it, we started understanding the more details of, of what is available to men. Uh, if you don't have shockwave therapy. Mm -hmm. uh, and unfortunately, those options are tough for guys. Um, most men don't like taking, for instance, the common modalities of like a Viagra or a Cialis and so on. So we thought, hey, no one really does this. Uh, no one does it well. Might as well see if we can explore this opportunity. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. And then, you know, you're talking about the other types of options that people can do. Are there other options like surgery and things too, or just is it just the pill forms? There are. Um, so typically when you have erectile dysfunction, the first path of treatment is being prescribed Viagra or Cialis or Levitra and other modalities like that. Right. Uh, secondary, most men will then learn about injection therapy, uh, where you literally inject a medication directly into the shaft of one's penis. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that sounds a little intense. Um, it can be a bit intense. So most men don't want to go down that path. And the third option is getting into a surgical implant. Uh, of course, with surgery, there can be a lot of neg negatives that can come with that. Mm -hmm. So uh, most men don't want to go down that path. And once you do go down that path, there's no going back. Okay, um, okay. So, so we're talking about shockwave therapy. Right? Yes. Can you, can you elaborate on that? Well, it's low intensity shockwave therapy. And probably the shock puts people on the wrong track. I would imagine. It's not a shock. Mm -hmm. 
you can perceive it, you can feel it, but it's not uncomfortable in any way. Okay. Not when you receive it and not the next day. Okay. It's low intensity sound waves, and that's probably a better way to understand it. Okay. You can feel it, but it's not uncomfortable. Okay. And what is it actually doing? Simply, what it's trying to do is start a focused inflammation, very low grade inflammation in the pudendal arteries. Mm -hmm. That secondarily stimulates neovascularization, which is new blood vessel growth of the pudendal arteries, the arteries that feed the penis. Mm -hmm. It's a slow process. It takes months, slower than bone growth. Mm. So it's not like a week later you're gonna be changed. Mm -hmm. But in the process, you get rejuvenated, you get better blood flow to the pudendal arteries. Mm -hmm. That allows the whole beginning of an erection Mm -hmm. with the release of nitric oxide and okay. the whole chemical cascade that follows after that. Okay. But the basis of this is having good blood flow. Okay. And the reasons we have erectile dysfunction is because we don't have good blood flow. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't have a whole bunch of guys in their 20s coming in, but we have a few. Mm -hmm. But it's primarily men 50 years and over. Mm -hmm. It's very common. 50% of men 50 and over will have mild to moderate dysfunction. Okay. And some will have a very severe dysfunction. Okay. So there's a wide spectrum in ages and in severity. Is it possible that um, men might be suffering from some sort of vascular disease that could cause it? Well, probably 60% or more of it is vascular. Okay. 20% um, or so is related to injuries from prostate therapy. Okay. So, and another 20% or so is psychosocial. Mm -hmm. And sometimes performance anxiety becomes as much of a problem, a psychological problem, right. almost like professional athletes. Mm -hmm. They get in a slump and the they can do it. They can physically do it. They just psychologically get into a place where they're not functioning very well. Right. So that's also a factor. Okay. But 60% okay. of it's going to be vascular. It's vascular. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, John, you talked a little bit about Viagra and Cialis and Levitra. And so, how, if they're taking those types of, of medications, how is this particular treatment going to eliminate them from having to use those? Hopefully. Okay. Um, but they don't work against each other. Okay. So you can use, you can use both. All right. Um, the pills essentially slow down the degradation of the enzyme that breaks down the nitric oxide. Mm -hmm. So it gives you a longer concentration of nitric oxide and a longer duration. Okay. That's how the pills work. Okay. The injection therapy works by actually injecting into the sidewall of the penis very, three very potent vasodilators. Mm -hmm. It's called Trimix. Okay. And that works within 10 or 15 minutes. Okay. And that works for about 90% of the people. But it's cumbersome. Right. You have to get over the idea of injection, which is purely psychological, it's mm. not physical. Mm -hmm. It's just people think, that's the last thing in the world I'm ever gonna do. Right. I mean, I can't tell you, 95% of men say, okay, yeah. you can just erase that right. as an option. <laughs> because we're not going needles there. Right, you know, right. Well, wouldn't that be more of a short-term situation as well, as opposed to what you're proposing? That is, that absolutely okay. is. I mean, the best way to think about Focus shockwave therapy, what this treatment is, is to do a, a few things as Dr. Jung was just saying. One is to stimulate neovascularization, which is blood vessel growth. Think of it as you're putting fresh plumbing in. Mm -hmm. When you have fresh, clean pipes, it's a massive amount of blood flow can come into the penis, which allows for someone to get a full erection. Mm -hmm. uh, second, when you have erectile dysfunction, the soft tissue in the penis can uh, essentially uh, become unhealthy. And shock waves help to stimulate the repair of the soft tissue, so the elasticity of a man's penis begins to come back. So typically we see the majority of our guys that come in and do this treatment start to uh, see more blood flow, they start to see that their penis is actually increasing in size in some ways just because they're getting more blood flow. And as Dr. Jung was saying, it's, it's not an overnight fix by any means, mm -hmm. uh, but it is a, a long-term fix. So once it starts to take effect, we see men begin to come back to natural functionality where they are with their wife or their lover or whoever it might be, and they can react naturally and mm -hmm. get an erection and be able to go about their business uh, compared to having the time when they take a pill or maybe having side effects or maybe they had too much food before and now the pill's not reacting or not having to stick a needle in themselves. So mm -hmm. uh, that's the ultimate goal of this, of this type of treatment. And 
after having done this for a year and, and seeing what the effects are, uh, we really expect just about every single guy to have a positive reaction. Okay. Uh, it just comes down to what degree. And the majority of them do get back to having full erections again, not having to rely on the medications that they've had right. used before. Is it a permanent result? Probably nothing is permanent right. <laughs> except taxes. <laughs> 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 but 80% um, of the people that get this treatment will have a positive response. Okay. And there's kind of a gold standard for that. So if, if they want more information about it, um, you have a website, and that's uh, lasara.com. That's right. Okay, and then you also have a phone number that they could call as well. And what can, what can the patients expect when they walk into your office? Well, first, uh, if, you have, if they have questions, uh, the best thing would be to call in and talk to one of our counselors, uh, either myself or our, the rest of our team. We're very educated in this space, and specifically you know, how this affects people. Okay. Uh, so you typically have a conversation with us. Uh, we, it, it is a bit uncomfortable for some to have that type of conversation, but we can assure just about every single person that uh, we've heard just about everything you can imagine. Right. Uh, so we like to have a conversation over the phone, uh, explain what this is all about, and then come in, have a, a medical evaluation from Dr. DeYoung, okay. and at that point, after they've learned more about the treatment and we have confirm that they are a great candidate for this treatment, mm -hmm. then we offer it up for them. Um, and then they can start treatment right away, really. Uh, okay. As you know, maybe if they have known or see on our website, we're just right up in Tustin. It's okay. about 15 minutes door to door from Laguna Woods. Mm -hmm. um, so it's quite simple. And each session takes about 30 minutes as well. Okay. So you're typically about in and out. And um, it's really a relatively easy experience. All right. It's kind of interesting that if you videotaped a bar with nothing but men in drinking and talking. Mm -hmm. Erectile dysfunction would not be one of the topics that would come up. I probably not. Ever. <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to admit to that, right? <laughs> no. But it's interesting when they come into the office that they finally get a chance to talk to somebody. Right. They, we make them feel very much relieved. I've been doing clinical medicine for over 40 years. Okay. So you just say, this is common. What are we going to do about it? How is it affecting you? and just sit down and, and have a very relaxed, we're not in a hurry conversation because everything's a bit different. Right. Some people have diabetes. Some people are still trying to smoke and do this, which is very mm -hmm. challenging. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't be doing that. But there's all kinds of variations. And you just right. have to take a little time and, t and talk about it. Okay. Some people are in relationships. Our oldest gentleman is like 95 years old. Wow. They're not chasing young women. They want to have intimacy with their wife that they've right. been with for 60 plus years right and it's very important right. so there's all kinds of variances on this and okay. we have a very nice office and it's very relaxed and Perfect. people are very comfortable to be there actually all right well sounds great well thank you very much for the information i appreciate you both being here well thank you very much Lisa. thank you Lisa. All right. and for more information you can visit their website lasara.com Thank you for joining us. Number one choice for wood flooring and more is LA Carpet. Now during their two-day sale, visit their showroom now and get 65% off wood flooring, laminate, and waterproof flooring. Plus, get five-year, 0% financing. LA Carpet, number one for you. And our movie coming up for today is called Same Kind of Different as Me. This came out about a year ago, and it tells the story of an international art dealer who must befriend a dangerous homeless man in order to save his struggling marriage to his wife, a woman whose dreams will lead all three of them on the journey of their lives. This stars Greg Kinnear, Renee Zellweger, and Dijaman Hanzu. And uh, this is loosely based on a true story. I say loosely because the parts that do kind of into the dream sequences kind of go back in time. Obviously, uh, that's, uh, that's not part of it. Uh, but it is based on a true, uh, basically on a true story. Also stars John Voight. That will be today at 2 and at 7 o'clock. Then on the 24th, uh, we bring you Disney's Christopher Robin, and this is a live action version 
of sort of the Winnie the Pooh stories, but really what this is about is Christopher Robin has now grown up. He, uh, this takes place, I think, about the 1940s, uh, maybe right after, um, after uh, World War II in England, and he works for a company, a luggage company, and working really hard and kind of uh, disengages from his family and reconnects to his boyhood by discovering that uh, Winnie the Pooh is really alive. And he goes back to the Hundred Acre Woods and how he reconnects to his family and daughter. It's really a heartwarming movie. Uh, very well done. Ewan McGregor stars as Christopher Robin. And uh, that will be on Christmas Eve the 24th at 2 o'clock and at 6 o'clock. I do want to remind you too, on Christmas we're bringing you uh, three movies. We're going to bring you a Paddington Bear 2. Then we also have a couple of Christmas movies in there as well. They're um, kind of the Hallmark Channel, Lifetime Channel type movies that uh, we're going to show on that day. So a lot of movies over the next uh, few days. Now as far as the weather goes, if you're watching us in the morning, you're going to have clouds probably till midday, then should have mostly sunny skies after that. Going to stay in the upper 60s for a few days as we get to Christmas Eve. Um, I have 69 degrees and that is about the average that could get a little cooler that day. As far as that rain coming in, doesn't look like it's going to be as big as they thought. Rain right now is looking overnight from Christmas Eve into about Christmas morning and then should dissipate, but it will be a cold front coming in. Look at the drop in temperature. So uh, for about three or four days, we're going to be in the low 60s, but it, um, not too much rain now. Was it going to be rain for a few days? Doesn't look that way now, which is good. Just about maybe up to about 10 o'clock Christmas morning. Now we look around. Uh, here we are, California weekend weather and cool to cold in most areas, uh, especially up in uh, the Sierras. They could get a little snow from the system. It's not going to be much at all, as will Big Bear. Uh, but again, it's not going to be uh, all that uh, big amount of rain or snow. All right. Um, I want you to all have a, a great uh, Christmas holiday, and uh, we'll be back next week. I'm going to be gone for a few days, so I won't be back until uh, probably the 31st, but you all have a great holiday. Take care. Bye-bye.